So anybody who knows me and has known me for a few years knows that I am, have not ever really been a fan of mushrooms. But today we are doing something that surprises even me. I love this dish. We are doing a creamy mushroom soup that only takes about 30 to 40 minutes to do and it is absolutely scrumptious. Hey guys, if this is your first time tuning in, let us know you're out there by giving us a thumbs up below and then hit that subscribe button over here in the left corner to make sure you never miss a video. Now let's start cooking. Our creamy mushroom soup has two parts. So the first part is basically a soup base and the soup is going to start with, we're gonna sweat some onion and celery. And then the second part of the soup is gonna be our mushrooms, which we'll talk about in a second. So really, I just wanted to demonstrate how really simple this, this, this recipe is and really how quickly it comes together. So the first thing that we're gonna do is get our soup base started by sweating our onion and celery. And by sweating, I mean to cook it on very low heat until it's soft and translucent. So let's just get our, get our heat going. And in this case, we're using olive oil. We're not using a, a, high, a high heat uh, oil. We're using an olive oil because we're gonna be, we wanna kind of flavor the soup as well as to sweat our, our, mushroom, our uh, onions and our celery. So let me just get the celery cut up. And let's do our onion. And again, observing good rules of, of cutting, hands on both sides make a bridge cut that onion right in half just like that and there's lots of different ways you can peel it you can use your paring knife to come and do something like that and uh, in this case we're going to be slicing our onion so um, we're just going to take the skin off here and you want to get to where you're in the good part of the onion you don't want any of the tough outer skin left on your onion, so. And using your paring knife to do that is very helpful. Just holding your paring knife right here and using that to come down this way. Not sure how many of you are aware of this, but you know, Kim and I live in the Loire Valley of France and this area is very famous for mushrooms. And the reason for that is, is uh, if, if you know anything about the, the Loire Valley, it's sometimes referred to as the Valley of the Kings, which is where a lot of the kings of France would build their chateau in the, even starting in the Middle Ages and going all the way through, through history. So they have these huge chateaux that have been built along the Loire Valley. And so that's why it's called the Valley of the Kings. So these kings would build their chateau, but they used the limestone from the, from the sides of the, of the mountain or the sides of the hills to build their chateau and even down underneath the ground. And so when they excavated all the limestone out of the earth, uh, that left these huge caves and caverns, which basically are referred to as troglodytes. Well, it was discovered that these caves are the perfect uh, temperature and humidity to first of all store wine, hence the huge quantities of wine here, and then secondly to grow mushrooms. So there's a lot of mushroom, mushroom cultivation in this area, bringing us to where we are now. So that's why mushrooms and mushroom products and mushroom soups, etc., are just a huge uh, product here in, in France. So again, we're, we're using two different types of mushrooms today. This is a baby bella, and uh, then we've got a cremini mushroom, also referred to as a Paris blonde. So in preparing these mushrooms, cultivated mushrooms don't really need to be washed. You just need to brush the dirt off of them if they're pretty fresh. So I'm just gonna stir my onions here. So just brushing the dirt off of them should do it. And to, to prepare them, I've already done the white mushrooms, but what I'm gonna do is uh, for presentation's sake later, I'm just going to um, cut a couple of these in wedges for us to use later. So that's what we're doing there. But in general, to prepare your mushrooms, it's very nice to just cut them in half 
and then you can just slice, slice them just like that. And the other thing about mushrooms is that, especially with these cultivated mushrooms, as you can see, some of these I've, I've pulled the stems off of. This one I haven't pulled the stem off of, but you can see where it's gotten dry a little bit there. So we'll just cut a little bit of that stem, and but you can use the rest of that, especially for soup. So now, once the stem is cut off of a mushroom cap, you can actually just put them right down on your board like that, and you can cut them just like this. So lots of different ways to, to skin this animal. So we'll do that for the Carminis. And let's also do, let's also quarter, let's do some wedges with our Carminis as well. And these wedges will be, yeah, the, cut the stem off that one. So these wedges will be used to, uh, to garnish our plate. So just like that. Okay. I think we are about ready. Oops, we've got a couple of, a couple more that we need to cut. There we go. And you know, we're not having to be real precise about this since this is all going to be really one big mush up in the very end. All right, so our onions and celery have been sweated. We can go ahead and just take those off the heat now and let them rest. In the meantime, let's Let's heat up another pan. You could do this entire thing in the same, same pot in, a, in this Dutch oven if you'd like. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to do that today just because we have a pretty large quantity and there's a little bit more surface area in this, in this pan than there would be in my Dutch oven here. So we're getting our pan nice and heated. And once this starts smoking a little bit, we're going to put our mushrooms in, and this is a dry pan. There's nothing in here. There's no oil, no butter, or anything like that. But the, the purpose of this is uh, we are going to uh, put our mushrooms in there, and we're going to dry roast them, if you would. And then they will eventually start sweating and giving off their, their moisture. After they do that is when we'll add our, our garlic and our shallots to that. So we'll let our pan get hot, and while that's happening, um, let's talk about our other flavor elements. So two other flavor elements we have. One is some fresh thyme from the garden. And so we are just going to pull that thyme from the leaves. And if you've got fresh thyme, the best way to do it is just go right down the, the stem and pull those leaves from it, just like that. And this is, fairly young thyme, so it's very tender. Um, and we'll just pull it off just like that. And on the edges, you can actually just, you can include a little bit of the stem portion as well. It's very, very strong smelling, by the way. This is, I literally just pulled this out of my garden a few minutes ago. So fresh thyme is a very strong smell and a very strong scent. Um, and you don't, you don't need a lot of it because it, it could definitely overpower something similar to a tarragon or something like that. It's not quite as strong as tarragon, but um, it's a great flavoring for mushrooms. All right, so we've got our, got our thyme in. All right, so our, our, our pan is smoking here. So let's go ahead and get our mushrooms in. We'll go ahead and put this entire amount in first and let those get going. And again, we're just gonna, we're gonna let those go for a little bit and then we'll shake them around a little bit. While that's going, we'll finish with our, with our preparation. So we've got parsley also, some fresh parsley. What I'm gonna do is use about this much. So we are going to put the stems, we're gonna use the stems of the parsley for our soup. So believe it or not, you can actually use those stems for your soup and the stems of parsley also 
have a really strong flavor. And so we'll use those with our thyme. And let's flip our mushrooms around a little bit. Let those go. And now for our leaves of our, of our parsley, we will just chop those up. So just putting them together like that. And that's probably about all we'll need. And this will be used to garnish our dish at the end. Okay. Let me just do another quick flip. If you can see it, those mushrooms are starting to give off their, their, uh, their water a little bit. So we'll let those go a little bit longer. And since we're using this uh, parsley for garnish, we just want to get it nice and chopped up. So the best way to do that is to hold your knife on one end and just to go over it just like that. Parsley is ready. Okay, we are nice. Good to go there. And we'll take those out. Ooh. Very nice aroma. It's got that, it's not a, it's not a burnt smell it's just a nice deep caramelized uh, aroma to that all right we'll let that get hot again and then we will add our our blonde mushrooms to that so the next part of this is we'll we'll, we'll finish doing the same thing with our mushrooms and then once we finish with our white mushrooms, we are going to then um, add a little bit of oil, a little bit of butter into this pan, along with our garlic and our shallots. And we'll do what a lot of people do from the very beginning. We'll just saute our mushrooms. Our mushrooms have caramelized. And now what I've done is I've just put both of them back in here and we're just letting them give up their water and just keep tossing them around a little bit. And I think we're pretty much good to go there. So now, let's add a little bit of butter and probably about a tablespoon. That's what we'll add. And then we'll add our, our shallots and our garlic. We'll just come up. Beautiful. Oh. That is sincerely a heavenly aroma. All right, let's add just a little bit of salt. And again, we're salting very lightly during these steps because we don't want to over salt anything because uh, we'll adjust it at the very end. So. They're nice and tossed around. And we are good to go with that. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to add our mushrooms into our pot. Into our Dutch oven. And I know it's hard to believe that we started out with the huge amount of mushrooms that we started out with. And we've ended up with a small amount. But they, you know, mushrooms are, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's a lot. It's like 90% water or something. So... They give off a lot of water. Got our mushrooms and uh, got our onions and uh, shallots and garlic and everybody's in the hot tub. And so now we're gonna add our parsley stems and our thyme. And I am telling you, this flavor is, this aroma is otherworldly. Just fantastic. 
Mm. All right, so now while that is getting going, we are now going to add our chicken stock. And so one of the, one of the things about um, a, a mushroom soup to me is the stock that you use. So we are using a homemade chicken stock and you could use a vegetable stock. You know, this recipe is, is great for vegetarians and vegans alike. So you could use a plant-based butter if you wanted to keep it completely vegan. And you could use a vegetable stock if you wanted to keep it completely vegan. Uh, in this case, we're using a, a white chicken stock, which we've made from scratch. You don't always have to use a stock that you've made from scratch, but you know, 95% of the soup is the stock. So I think it's a good thing to, to make your own stock. And we'll, we'll actually have a video on that coming out very shortly. But if you, if you don't make your own stock, it's okay. With no judgment. But uh, buy a nice organic low salt stock. So now we'll just, we'll cover that. And we're going in with about a, that's about a liter of chicken stock. A liter is about four cups, so probably a liter to a liter and a half. So, you know, have four to five cups of stock uh, at the ready. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to bring this to a boil. And once it comes to the boil, we will turn it down and let it simmer. We'll cover it, let it simmer for about 15 minutes. We have now come to the boil and it is now time to we'll put the lid on we'll turn it back we've got it turned back down to more of a simmer now and we'll put our lid on and we'll let that simmer for about 15 minutes until everything is nice and soft hey everybody it's walter from artistic gourmet adventures my wife kim and i own this unique small group tour company where we host groups of six to 12 guests for one week luxury adventures in beautiful locations throughout Europe and the United States. I have the privilege of being the adventure chef, creating and preparing daily gourmet meals for our guests. So in this video series from our cozy home kitchen here in the beautiful Loire Valley of France, we will demonstrate a wide variety of recipes from culinary classics to originals, as well as covering professional kitchen techniques for the home chef. For more information on Artistic Gourmet Adventures, check our website, linked in the description below. Our soup has been simmering now, and it's been partially covered. It's been simmering now for about 15, 20 minutes. Should be nice and soft. And yes, looks very nice. And you can see a little bit of the, the stock has um, evaporated. So if we need to add a little bit more, we can certainly do that. But now we're just going to take it off and we are going to blend it. Or as they say here, we're going to whiz it with our immersible blender. Now you could do this with either an immersible blender like this, or if you don't have an immersible blender, you can use a stand blender. You would just take it out in cups and put it in your stand blender. So we just want to get this nice and blend it up very well. I don't know if you can see that, but it's nice and nice and thick. And I'm just going to actually go ahead and add a little bit of more liquid to that while we're blending, because I can tell it's going to be quite thick. Okay, we'll finish getting this blended up and we'll come back and finish it off. Our soup is nice and well blended, as you can see. And um, we are just going to wipe our sides down. We just want to make sure that nothing gets stuck there and starts getting charred or burned. Oh, looks beautiful. And you know what? This soup, just as it is, because we've, we've got garlic and shallots in there, we've got just a little touch of butter, got a wonderful chicken stock, we've put a little bit of salt in it. Let's just taste it before we finish it. Man alive, I'm telling you what, that's good. It's just really good. 
So, but it's literally just getting started. Not really, we're almost finished with it. But literally you could serve that just like it is. It's just fantastic. So we are going to go in and we're going to mix a little bit of cream. And I can tell you, we've, we, we're not even going to use all of this. I've got about 175 millimeters of cream here, a little bit less than two, 200. And we're probably going to use about half of this. And what this does is it just smooths it out and um, makes it a little bit creamier. But you literally could go without this if you really wanted to avoid adding any more any fat to this. Of course, we've, we've added very little fat as it is. So I would say I put about, I literally put up maybe 50 mils of that, maybe a quarter cup of, of cream to that. We'll just do a little bit of an adjustment with salt. We don't want to get too salty. And uh, just because I've got it right here, we'll use some black pepper. Our soup is basically brown, so it's okay to use black pepper. If you were using, you know, making a soup that was more white, you'd want to use white pepper. But that's fantastic. If I got it back on the heat just to kind of get our, our, um, our cream incorporated into everything. But, and we happen to have an official taste tester here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get our, our camera lady to give it a... Mm. How's that? Heavenly. Okay, she says it's heavenly, and I have to concur. It's really good. So come back and we'll get it plated up. Okay, I think we are ready to give our creamy mushroom soup a try. Oh, nice, nice and, nice and creamy, really scrumptious. Beautiful color. Okay, we will, let's add a few of our specially reserved mushrooms right in the center. Just like that. And a little drizzle of cream. And you know, if you've got some creme fraiche, that would be nice as well. And let's finish it with just a few leaves of parsley. And there we go. Our easy, about 30 to 40 minute creamy mushroom soup. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, give us a thumbs up below and hit that subscribe button, it's free. And ring the bell if you want to be notified as soon as we release a new video. Also, let us know in the comments if you have any special recipe requests. We really appreciate you tuning in. See you next time.